Luffy's powers have reached an astronomical level in the manga. And as of right now, Blackbeard might be the only one that can stop it. So in this video, we're going to be discussing the eventual clash of Luffy versus Blackbeard, the major stakes in that battle with the history between them and their roles in fate, and also how their devil fruit and hockey abilities perfectly counter each other. As always, make sure you subscribe and join our King Pirates crew. And if you have a good time watching this video, please drop a like for the YouTube algorithm. Much appreciated. All right, so Luffy versus Blackbeard. This is probably one of the most anticipated fights in the story because Blackbeard is not only going to be one of the final villains in the story but he's been a villain that's been built up for a very long time he was one of the earliest villains we were introduced to someone we heard about all the way back in Drum Island and eventually Luffy ended up meeting Blackbeard and Jaya and that introduction was just so well done because at the time we didn't even know he was Blackbeard he actually seemed like a pretty chill guy like just a silly goofy character as a matter of fact when I rewatched One Piece with my girlfriend Tina she actually said I like Marshall D. Teach and in my head I'm I'm just dying laughing thinking about all the things that he's gonna do in the story but her reaction made perfect sense at the time i'm pretty sure that was my first reaction as well because when we first meet blackbeard he is this kind of silly character that's being set up as the opposite of luffy with the things that he likes but we also end up seeing that he has some very strong similarities with luffy in that iconic scene in jaya in that scene luffy and zoro just got beat up by bellamy who was laughing at their dreams and throughout that entire encounter they just didn't say anything nami was even very confused why they didn't fight back and in the end it was actually Blackbeard that completely broke down why Luffy and Zoro acted the way they did while also showing that he had a similar belief in dreams as well and that was a really big moment because Luffy and Zoro one of the best things about them is their undying will to accomplish their dreams which you really don't see in a lot of characters in the story like even though other straw hats have dreams of their own none of them are really as strong as Luffy and Zoro's like for example as I mentioned earlier at the time Nami didn't even understand why Luffy and Zoro didn't fight back and she was the first straw hat to meet both of them and has been with them the longest so she understands them the best so the fact that Blackbeard showed that he understood Luffy and Zoro and kind of showed that he had that same ambition as well not only made him a super interesting and mysterious character but gave him a defining trait that made Luffy and Zoro such great characters and that scene to this day is one of the most unforgettable scenes in One Piece not only with Blackbeard giving the iconic dialogue of people's dreams never end but also with him concluding that conversation by showing that he also also believed that the Sky Islands were real. Which looking back at that now, he might have known that information already, but it was also kind of a metaphor to show that he was also a dreamer. So right off the bat with his introduction, before we even knew Marshall D. Teach was Blackbeard, there was a clear emphasis on his character to establish him with an ambition that rivaled Luffy and Zoro's. It's just that unfortunately, Blackbeard has some different goals in mind and he had a very different way of going about things. Because his goals and actions not only propelled him to the top of the pirate world, but but also set up a very dark history between him and Luffy. And honestly, this history between Blackbeard and Luffy is another reason why he's such a great villain. Because throughout the entire story, there's not that many villains that directly go after Luffy and did something bad to him. Because most of the time, Luffy is just fighting a villain because he's mad that they did something bad to a country or his friends. The eventual fight with Blackbeard, on the other hand, is different. Luffy has some real beef there. Because Blackbeard, along with Akainu, are really the two main reasons why Ace is dead. So when the fight between Blackbeard and Luffy finally goes down, it's gonna be one of the most personal fights for Luffy in the story with some incredibly high emotional stakes. But things really elevate to another level when we consider the roles that these two play in fate. Because in the recent chapters, we got some pretty big confirmations. Not only is Luffy Joy Boy, but he also ate the mythical fruit of the sun god Nika. Now, as far as Luffy being Joy Boy, I don't think that's a big surprise. If you wanna get a full breakdown of my thoughts, you can check out this video. But essentially, it kinda ties back to what I was talking about earlier in that Luffy has always been a liberator throughout the entire story in his mind he's been just kind of helping out people that he considers friends in actuality he's literally liberated a bunch of towns and countries and on top of that luffy's own beliefs are strongly tied to freedom it's why he explores the seas it's his definition of becoming the pirate king so as far as luffy's role in the story goes as the main character it was pretty clear that he was always going to be the liberator the one to free the world the shining sun to bring the dawn to the world but now it's just fully confirmed not only with him having the title of joy boy but also having the sun god devil fruit which is like the definition of freedom but what's even more interesting is what blackbeard's role in this is as the person that's clearly gonna stand up on the other side against luffy because as we've discussed blackbeard is already an incredible villain and a big part of that is the history between him and luffy and all the terrible things that he's done but in my opinion what makes him an even better villain and character is all the layers to his story and all the mystery surrounding him as we mentioned earlier blackbeard is also a dreamer with strong ambition 
positions. But unlike Luffy who chases freedom, Blackbeard seems to go after power and dominance. He gathers crew members not based off of friendship, but instead strength. And as a pirate, he hasn't just freely explored the seas going island to island, but instead he's meticulously planned every single step that he makes. He spent the vast majority of his life with the Whitebeard pirates before finally taking action to get the fruit that he wanted. And getting that fruit, as far as we know, was the thing that sprung him into action. So that devil fruit, the Yami Yami no Mi, is clearly a very important one. And we'll talk about the powers of the fruit in the next section, because first I want to talk about the significance of the fruit. Because given that we know that Luffy literally has the sun god devil fruit and he's going to be bringing the dawn to the world, Blackbeard having the darkness fruit just feels like the perfect counter to Luffy. It's two things that directly go against each other and it just makes things so much more interesting. Because now there's just a lot more story and lore to explore when these two finally fight. And I fully expect that we will be getting a Blackbeard flashback when the two of them finally fight. And I think that flashback has potential to be the greatest in the entire story. Because first off, Blackbeard definitely has some connections to Rox. Not only with his goals being similar to Rox and being the king of the world and how he's continuously trying to get stronger, but there's also been several hints like Blackbeard taking over Pirate Island, which was the former base of the Rox Pirates. Blackbeard's ship is also called the Saber of Zebek. So I think it's pretty clear at this point that Blackbeard at least took some inspiration from Rox, so that's going to be a big part of his backstory. But I think in the end, what's really going to hit is the exploration of Blackbeard's story because that's what always hits in all of these villain backstories. It's one of the things that Oda does so well. He allows us to see these backstories and what these characters went through and how they got to where they are today. And with Blackbeard not only seemingly being an endgame villain, but also a character that's been set up for a long time, I fully expect his backstory to be legendary and it will make his fight against Luffy that much better. But with that said, let's talk about the actual fight and how it's going to go down. Because story-wise, it's definitely going to have a lot of high stakes and a lot of major reveals. But what's going to make this fight epic is how strong both of them are and how they perfectly stack up against each other. Because Luffy, we're already seeing firsthand that he's become an absolute monster. I expect him to win against Kaido here in this fight, which is a major feat in itself. And I think for a lot of people, Luffy defeating Kaido might be enough to put him at like the strongest in the world. And I can understand why people think that Kaido is the strongest creature in the world. He's the current pirate with the highest bounty. I still don't think Luffy has reached his peak or that he's fought the strongest person in the world. Because I think people are kind of sleeping on Blackbeard and he's right now the strongest pirate in the world. This is something I believed in for quite a while. You can see in my last top 30 video that you can check out right here. But in that list, I put Blackbeard at number two behind Emu. But Emu is really for the branding of the channel. So really, I think Blackbeard is the strongest. And the main reason I did so was because of narrative, because I believe that Blackbeard is going to be one of the final villains that Luffy fights. And if that's going to happen, he's going to have to be the hardest villain that Luffy has ever fought in the story. And I think most people would agree with that thought. But for some reason, a lot of people think that Blackbeard is going to do something that gets him to that level. But honestly, I think we have no reason to believe that Blackbeard isn't already that strong because Blackbeard has always meticulously planned everything so much so that despite him being in the worst generation, he was so far ahead, nobody really considered him on the same level anymore. And he really did all of that before the time skip even started. So during these past two years of the time skip and the few months afterwards, while Luffy has been growing immensely, do we think that Blackbeard has also not gotten monstrously stronger as well? Because we know that he's been gathering devil fruits to make his crew stronger and planning his next move towards his goal. I also imagine that he's been working to get stronger himself as well. Because although the Yami Yami no Mi and the Guru Guru no Mi are both absolutely devastating devil fruits, how strong would Blackbeard be if he was able to awaken both of them? First off, the Guru Guru no Mi is already able to destroy the environment. So if it's able to be even stronger and impact the environment even more, I can't even imagine the, like, the possibilities of what it can do. The Yami Yami on the other hand is even more of a mystery because we haven't seen a Logia awakening in the story. But with Logia as being a stronger category of Devil Fruits, I'd imagine the awakening elevates his powers even more. So honestly, when Luffy fights Blackbeard, I kind of expect that Blackbeard will have both of those fruits awakened. Now, some of you might make a counter argument here that that was too short of a time frame to awaken both of them. But honestly, if Law and Kid figured it out, I think Blackbeard should be able to as well. And then on the hockey side of things, I don't think Blackbeard is lacking there either. I think he will have Conqueror's Hockey. I know that he has shown a cowardly side where he is afraid of death, but I think with his ambition and dreams, he definitely qualifies to have Conqueror's Hockey. Now, as far as him having like the advanced version of every single hockey, I'm not so sure about that. I do definitely think he will have Conqueror's Hockey and we will get a Luffy and Blackbeard Conqueror's Hockey clash. But even with all of that said, we still have not yet reached the peak potential of 
called Blackbeard because most likely he's also going to have a mythical zone. Now, as of right now, there's a bunch of theories on what this devil fruit could be, but I think we can all agree that he's most likely going to have a third fruit. And the main reason for that goes back to his Jolly Roger, which has three skulls. So that in itself, I think is a big hint that he's going to have three fruits. And it's also kind of a satisfaction factor that he already has a Logia and a Paramecia. It would just feel kind of unsatisfactory if he didn't also get a Zoan. Now, as for what that devil fruit could be, the idea I like the most right now is the octopus fruit by Evil. I'll link it in the description. Definitely go check out his video because he presents a lot of evidence. I think the strongest evidence that he found was that the number three and eight revolve around Blackbeard a lot. Like for example, Blackbeard's Jolly Roger has three skulls and eight bones. And how those numbers tie back to an octopus is that an octopus has three hearts and also of course eight tentacles. So as of right now, if I had to pick a theory, I would probably say the octopus one is the best bet. But overall, the idea that I like even more is that Blackbeard already has his mythical Zoan because I feel like at this point, him getting a third fruit, there would not be enough time for him to really adjust to that fruit and maximize his powers. Instead, if he's had this fruit this whole time, it could explain why he's able to eat multiple devil fruits. And it would also be another fruit that he could awaken, making him even stronger. And where things really get interesting is when we look at Luffy's powers and Blackbeard's powers and how they perfectly counter each other. First off, one of the longest running theories is that Luffy, when he awakens, could turn his environment into rubber, which kind of counters the Guru Guru no Mi. And that theory at this point is pretty much confirmed because Luffy can impact his environment with his awakening. So in that regard, Luffy gains an advantage, but then Blackbeard comes in with the broken power of darkness, which not only plays into the symbolism, as we mentioned earlier, but the power literally allows you to negate other people's devil fruits, which honestly might be the only power that can counter Luffy's fruits because Luffy's fruit is the definition of freedom and imagination. So unless you have a way to literally shut down Luffy's powers like Blackbeard does, your only option would be to overpower him to win, which Kaido might not even be able to do. So with the Yami Yami no Mi, Blackbeard now gains an advantage. And then we have the last factor of the mythical zone, which is a mystery for both of them. Is there another form and transformation that Luffy can go into that will be his gear six? And what exactly will Blackbeard's mythical Zoan be if he does actually have one? Now, it's fully possible that the mythical Zoan part actually don't play that much of a factor in the fight. But with everything else added up, this is setting up to be a monstrous clash between Luffy and Blackbeard. A battle of the sun versus darkness, two powers that perfectly counter each other, and the winner will become the Pirate King. And you can become a winner if you can guess which straw hat I'm holding in my hand. If you guess it wrong, you have to like, subscribe, and watch the next video. And the answer is Little Chopper. Yeah.